Look at this. Try and dodge this. Aliens crap. I think I just died. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're hopping into the 1992 shooter by Konami known as Axelay. So here's a bit of backstory. We have a family pendant showing a happy family that we wear around our neck. There's a peaceful planet here. This is not Earth, by the way. This is a planet known as Zillus, and it was invaded by the dastardly Armada of Annihilation. I think when you have adopted the name Armada of Annihilation for your army or society or whatever you are, you're just straight up embracing evil at that point. You're like, yeah, we're evil. Deal with it, you know? Like, there's no pretense of being peacekeepers or liberators or somehow being the good guy. You're just like straight up a society of bad guys. So, Armada of Annihilation attacked the planet. Planet of Zilla, solar system, are being threatened by a mysterious enemy. And uh, it's going to be up to us to defeat them. And we're going to defeat them by flying a little plane around, shooting up all the enemies we can find. Indestructible forces of the enemy are overwhelming the small fleet. Who will save us? Some guy holding a pendant. Oh, wow. They actually animated closing the pendant. Uh, this is great. This is great uh, pixel art animation, by the way. I'm loving this intro. This totally has the old school Konami feel, like really high quality, uh, well done graphics. After months of tenacious enemy attacks, only one ship has survived. Axelay. Oh, we're the only one left. We're like the master chief, basically, um, of this planet. It's going to be up to us. Army of One, here's here, here's our, our shot, I guess. Now, this game is notable for having a number of kind of really neat features. Uh, as we will see right off the bat, uh, one of the, the most noticeable things about this game is it features some interesting visual effects to create su a pseudo 3D experience, which is kind of cool. Um, the other thing that's kind of neat is that it is like Life Force or Gradius, but you don't pick up weapons as you play. Instead, you actually assign your loadout to your ship before you go into the fight. And if you take damage, it knocks out the weapon you have activated. So you guys will see what I mean a little bit more as we actually play here. But it's kind of an actually really neat uh, mechanic, uh, I think. I, I can't think of another game off the top of my head where where this is a thing. So right now we don't have any options. So pod one is gonna be that weapon, side uh, is gonna be that, and our bay is gonna be this. But if we, assuming we can beat the first level, we will get op uh, options for more weapons. And as you beat each other level, you get more and more options. So here's our default weapon, it's a pretty good gun. You can press, I think it's L or R to switch between guns whenever you want. I'm kind of nervous to do it. Oh God, okay, that was actually a good time to switch. So one of our guns here is this uh, gun that sort of shoots in various directions, a directional gun, which is pretty cool. And we also have this other gun, which can fire missiles and stuff. So there we go. Uh, I kind of like this gun, this sort of beefy, I guess it's like a flamethrower machine gun kind of thing. Oh my God, the rocks, <laughs> the base has exploded the rocks. Oh, okay. And we have taken our first amount of damage. And, oh, that's actually interesting. It didn't uh, actually destroy my gun. Uh, maybe I maybe I got a shield or something. Um, but obviously you'll notice that sort of the screen is kind of warping near the top there. They're trying to give you sort of a, they're using Nintendo, the Super Nintendo sort of like Mode 7 style graphics to give you the experience of sort of flying on a horizon. So obviously the stuff in the, in the distant, in the distance sort of like bends over the horizon. So this is what I mean with the, the pseudo 3D effect. So, oh, we're at a boss already. All right. We'll take you down, buddy. Oh, so notice that my weapon, my machine gun thing got damaged. So now it says, if you notice in the top right corner of the screen, one of my weapons, it says out. A weapon has been knocked out of commission. Oh, and the other one got knocked out of commission. All right, we are only on missiles now. Come on, you monster. I will take you. This guy's actually really annoying. He keeps diving under the water. Aha, uh -huh, you afraid to fight me in a real fight? Oh god, okay, he knocked out that weapon too. Yeah, we got him though! Sweet, alright. It was a close a close call, but we successfully wait. Oh that that wasn't the boss! Oh, the level's just beginning. Oh. Okay, we're in a lot of trouble actually. 
ship is like critic. What, what was that? Just like a mini boss? Our ship is like critically damaged here. Okay, one more hit and we're done for because all of our weapons are damaged. But oh, and apparently that destroys you right there. Okay. Uh, well, it's okay. We have extra lives, so that's something. Um, I appreciate that this game moved away from the single hit kills that are so common in most uh, shoot 'em ups. Because I I like shoot 'em ups. I feel like they're they're like they're not my favorite genre of game. Uh, they never have been, but I enjoy them typically. Um, but I do find that you know one hit kills and shoot 'em ups. I just I die all the time and I never get very far. So I like the fact that you have multiple hits. That's kind of nice. Also, I like the fact that when you straight up die, you just respawn right where you left off. It's very Contra-ish to not have to go back to like a checkpoint or redo the level or anything. Like, you just lose a life and you go back to exactly where you left off. So, that's not too bad. Oh, I got damaged again. Oh my god, I'm like stuck in a corner. Jeez. Um, so there's actually two fire... I'm just experimenting with the buttons. There's two fire modes for every gun. I've been basically using the B button. So for this gun, it's sort of a weak little uh, burst fire, but uh, missiles is the alt fire for this gun, which is pretty cool. Okay, this is this is the real boss, by the way. <laughs> I thought I was fighting the boss before. It was just a mini boss. The giant spy, giant mechanical spider is the real boss. Oh man, is he damaging me. What is happening? Uh, okay, I think we're getting him. I don't know what that web scanning is doing, if anything. Oh my god. Oh, they knocked me from behind. All right, we are screwed. We are destroyed. All right, he got me. Oh, that's it. I must have ran out of lives. Game over. All right, well, we'll go ahead and, and give it another shot here. This is actually a relatively short game. There's only six levels from what I have read. Um, so, you know, in theory, in theory, we could play this whole game here today. Now, practically speaking, my longtime viewers know that's a tall order when it comes to, uh... <laughs> okay, uh, my longtime viewers, and now my lo my not-so-longtime viewers, having just witnessed that, are starting to realize that, uh... It's only six levels, but at the same time, it's six levels, and that might be a tall order for Jay, so... We'll see how it goes, we'll see how it goes. I'll give it a shot, though. I mean, I... 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 I pff, crap. I do want to get a little better at this. I feel like I'm getting hit stupidly, but if I practice this a bit more, I think I could get through at least the first level or two. So we can at least see half the game. Um, now, if you do actually, if you are good at this game and you can't beat it, apparently if you beat it three times in a row, you will get a hidden message, a secret message that uh, congratulates you and uh, promises that there will be an Axel A2, a sequel to this game. Which is actually a broken promise, because there never was a sequel to this game. So I'm sure the developers intended there to be, uh, but I guess it it never happened. Um, I don't know if the game like didn't sell well enough or anything. Uh, this game was actually meant to be a Japanese exclusive game. It was never meant to be released in the West, but uh, apparently there was like a write-in campaign or something. Like the Konami got so many letters from. Uh, can, customers and like uh, you know journalists and stuff they decided to actually release this game in uh, in North America which is not something I, I knew that you could do hey we did way better on that guy this time around so we're doing we're doing not not so bad um, and then we just die so there is a way to die from one hit and that is crashing into another ship uh, which you just saw me do there so this might not be the run where we pass this level but we're still learning um, but I, I didn't know that you could actually change a developer's mind uh, when they decided to release a game only in Japan. Like, in my entire history of playing Nintendo and Super Nintendo games when I was a kid, I would I knew that there existed games that were only ever released in Japan. I didn't know there was anything we could do about it. I just assumed that was life, you know? I was like, oh, well, you know, that's a Japanese-only game. I guess I'll never play it. Actually... Okay, we did really bad there. We're gonna do better next time around, guys. As a kid, if you had told me that one day I'll be able to sit down on my computer and play any Nintendo game, any Super Nintendo game I want from any region, any time, you know, like that would have blown my little mind. I don't think I could have comprehended just how many games I would have had available. So just the idea of like ROMs and emulation and stuff, like, like, pff, crap. 
Okay, we die. You know what? Is there a way to reset this? I don't want to go into the first level there having like died right at the beginning. So we got to get like a semi good run. So we actually have a chance of beating this first level. Um, but yeah, the idea of like ROMs and emulation, like when that stuff all first dropped, I remember exactly where I was when I played my first Nintendo emulated game. I actually don't remember what game I played, but I do remember that it was uh, in the computer labs in my high school. And somebody showed me Nestical, which was a uh, in one of the original uh, NES emulators. And yes, it was a reference to testicles. I don't know why the creator called it Nestical, uh, but it was it was a very good emulator, and it blew my mind. And I remember, like, there was a bunch of us uh, in my high school who all discovered emulators around the same time. And it's like emulators just exploded in our friends group and everyone started playing emulated games and downloading all sorts of games they had like never played. Like I, I never owned uh, A Link to the Past growing up, a classic Super Nintendo game. Uh, but I always wanted to play it. Once I could play it on my computer, I, I, I played that thing in a weekend, you know? Like I, once I realized I could play all these classic Nintendo and Super Nintendo games, I was like downloading like a madman, you know, like back, uh, back in high school, so. Uh, yeah, it's it's when that happened, I realized I could play Japanese games. But back when Japanese, whoa, God, I can't believe I dodged that. Back when like Japanese games were new and stuff, I just figured, hey, if developer didn't release a game in uh, North America, there, there's you know nothing you could do. You're not gonna, Konami's not gonna listen to me. But people wrote enough letters, and and it happened. I don't know. I don't know if there are other examples. If you guys know of other examples where like a developer has basically listened to their fans and decided to like release a game that was meant to be ja uh, Japanese only in uh, in North America. I don't know. Also, another thing is back in the day, it was way more common for games to be Japanese only. I, I can't think of too many games that were literally North America only, you know, where where the developer like Konami like developed a game and they're like, this game is too intense for the Japanese people. Only people in North America will be able to play this. Um, you know, the only game I can think of like that is Mario Brothers 2, because the Mario Brothers 2 we got in the West is different than the one they got in Japan. Again, they didn't release the Japanese one in, in North America because they didn't think we could handle it. Um, and so they basically, this is, you know, everyone knows this these days, but they reskinned Doki Doki Panic and called it Mario 2. And then they actually re-released that Man, this guy's not dying. I'm playing this so cautiously because I don't want to screw up, but it's taking forever to kill him. Um, but they re-released the, the North American Mario Brothers 2 in Japan. They called it Mario Brothers USA, which is kind of cool. I actually have that Famicom card. I bought that uh, years ago now just to collect it because I thought it was really neat. Uh, but it's just basically Mario Brothers 2, and it's just called Mario Brothers USA uh, on the Famicom. So that's like one of the few examples I can think of off the top of my own head right now of like a game that was released basically in North America only uh, and then came to Japan. Although, you know, there's this big caveat of Mario Brothers 2 did exist in Japan. It was just called Doki Doki Panic. So I don't know. Probably doesn't even count as an example. So yeah, I can't think of too many games. I can't think of too many games that really are North American only games that the people in Japan never got. So really, really North America, it's like, I don't know, they treated us like a very gentle audience, you know, back in the day. Like, we, they're very sensitive. They're like, oh, we, we can't release that game in North America. We'll release it to the Japanese scum. They'll play anything. But our sensitive little North Americans, no, 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 no. They're, they're far too gentle for a game of this caliber, you know? Like, they didn't believe that we could deal with it. So yeah, I don't know what it was about this game. They looked at it and they were just like, no, no. They're like an American, a Canadian. They're not gonna. They're not gonna know what this game is. They're not gonna. They're not gonna appreciate it. They're not gonna enjoy themselves. This is just gonna be totally foreign to them. And then it took. Uh, it took North Americans saying, "Yo, can we play this game?" And finally, Konami was like, "Yeah, I guess so. I guess you guys are old enough to play the big boy games." Here's the alt fire for the machine gun. And then I have, oh yeah, the missiles. The missiles did pretty good on this guy, I think. Although I did die on this guy. I did, I did like not beat him. Oh God, okay, his little spider web. Uh, he tries to like catch you and 
Oh god. Oh, I can't believe I dodged that. Just gotta get my dodging skills in order. Okay, well, we have a couple of lives here. Oh god, I can't believe I dodged that, too. Hit him, hit him, hit him, hit him, hit him, hit him, hit him. Okay. So as long as we dodge that shot that comes from his webs, the rest is actually pretty easy. There we go. Like this, it's really easy to dodge those like side spiders. Oh, and now all of a sudden he can't use his web anymore. All right, we got this. Oh, but he started to shoot at us. Oh yeah! Oh look at that, even all my guns were taken out and I still took him down. I was in a crippled ship, guys. I want it noted, I was in a crippled ship. I still beat that boss. I dug deep. See, North Americans can handle this game. All right, we have unlocked a new weapon. So this, in our, in our bay, we can either have the macro missiles or the explosive bombs. I mean, we got to take the bombs just for the novelty. I don't know if they're actually a better weapon, but we're obviously going to take them. You give me access to bombs, I can't say no. And here we go. So level two is actually a side-scrolling level. So interestingly enough, some levels are sort of top down and others are side scrolling. Kind of kind of cool variety that they've got going on here. And the weapons behave more or less the same in both versions, but obviously there's subtle differences because, you know, when it's a side scrolling level, the weapons have to have slightly different physics. So, oh my god! Oh, drop bombs on them. Kill them. Jeez. Okay, we almost bit the farm right there. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! <laughs> this level is like surprisingly a lot harder than the other one that we just did. I like this weapon that like lets you sort of shoot all over the place. It's actually pretty cool. Okay, here's our bombs. Just straight up dropping bombs on people. Whoa, whoa, what's going on? <laughs> what the hell is that? The door just closed. Okay. I didn't know the door would I assumed it would open up again. So I guess we have to pay attention to opening and closing doors. And get in the door while the getting's good, like right there. Yikes. Okay, where are we? We're in like a ship construction yard now or something like that. Oh my god, alright, we took another hit. Alright, we are down. We're down to the bombs. Oh, now we're down to nothing. I think we died. <laughs> we might have exploded. Alright, oh god. It's actually like very interesting level design. Like there's so much movement in the terrain and stuff. Crazy. Oh god, okay, we took that hit. Taking a hit is way better than crashing into another ship, because that's a one-hit kill if you crash. I think this gun that I've got equipped right now is actually my favorite. I like the fact that it can, like, aim in different directions and stuff. And the fact that, uh, oh my god. Even when you're shooting all the way forward, it, uh... It basically sort of has, like, a wider spread than some of the other guns, so it allows you to kill more of what's on the screen. It's sort of like uh, the equivalent of Contra's spread gun. It's not quite the same, uh, but it's it's similar-ish. It has this dead spot right in the center. Like if I go too far back, anything dead in front of me is going to get shot to the left and right, but not actually shot. Also, I do for some reason I kind of like the fact that it looks like I'm shooting Dr. Mario pellets as well. Oh my god! All right, we're dead again. Uh oh, I don't know how we're going to pass this level. Do these things actually die? Oh my god. Around! Alright, we, we have no extra lives, basically. And we have to basically beat the, the boss of this level to get to the next stage. We're, we're totally screwed. Well, nothing makes me perform like pressure. Not necessarily perform well, but, you know, perform. I usually like to have, like, a nice, comfortable level of easiness in my video games. Not that I don't enjoy a challenge, but I think one of my simple pleasures uh, in life is getting really good at a video game and getting really overpowered in that game and just crushing enemies. Like, I'm not the kind of player who likes to always be super weak and have to, like, like really bring it all the time. I like getting good at games. But then I like just, like, crushing my enemies. Whoa, that almost crushed- that almost literally crushed me. That, uh, closing door there. Boom, kill all these guys. Alright, all these turrets- oh god, oh god. Woo! There's- there's- these levels are very dynamic. Very dynamic. Maybe the bombs will be good here. 
Now look at that, we can just carpet- Hopefully this guy exists only on the ground. So we can just carpet bomb him. Okay, oh, he- he is- he is kind of on the ground. Oh, he's like an- he's like an Ed 209, like a Robocop guy. I'm just gonna, like, bomb him like crazy. I don't- I feel like I'm probably not damaging him. Hold on, let's see if this works. Am I damaging him? Yes or no? It's hard to tell. He's kind of jittering as he moves. Oh, and he's smoking. So that's something. Alright, oh, he's blinking! That's always a good sign in games, when the enemies start to blink. Wow, actually, maybe the bombs are the secret weapon here. Maybe the bombs are the secret weapon. Okay, maybe I want to be dropping bombs on him? I can't tell where to drop my bombs. I'm just carpet bombing everything, basically. Oh yeah, no, actually, dropping it on his head, that's- that's the secret. Oh god, oh, he's coming for me. Oh, where do I- where do I go? <laughs> okay. Two can play at that game, Mr. Laser Man. I play at that game, I just mean avoid your attacks. This guy's actually not bad at all. I actually am enjoying this fight. Nice, simple, predictable patterns. Can't tell, again, can't tell 100% if I am hurting him. I, I'm just assuming my bombs are doing stuff. But like when he glows, okay. I was gonna say, is that him just powering up his weapon? Or are we actually hurting him? Well, a lot of ambiguity in that fight, but we somehow came out ahead. Yeah, eat it. All right, we passed two levels. I'm feeling confident about my ability to maybe pass one more level. We have like three continues or something. Oh no, we reset the game. We have like five. All right, so we can have the straight laser or the needle cracker. Obviously we're going needle cracker. Obviously, I guess we have to pick the round Vulcan and we're gonna go ahead and stick with the bombs because they've been doing us so well the explosive bombs I just assume the better weapons are on the farther end of the spectrum like as you unlock. Oh my god. Look at this Look at this weapon. This is the weapon you want This is you know what? Okay. Well, there it goes. Don't worry. It'll be back when I die But uh, you know when you're playing these shooter games sometimes you feel like you're just dodging lasers that are like covering the whole screen. Well, that weapon, that needle cracker or whatever weapon that we've got, kind of makes it feel like we're doing the same thing to the enemies. We're like basically saying, here you go, it's your turn to try and dodge everything that's on the screen. Look at this. Try and dodge this, aliens, crap. I think I just died. <laughs> All right, so the levels are pretty tough. Well, we got a few continues here. Uh, let's let's use these babies. See if we can make some progress. The needle cracker, I love it. It's like it just peppers the entire screen in every direction with lasers that also seem to hone hone in on enemies. So it's like, oh my god, this is so great. <laughs> Basically, just if you don't get hit, the lasers will take care of everything else. Just sit back and let the lasers do their thing. That is awesome. All right. We found my new favorite weapon, Needle Cracker, and there it goes. And there goes my life. All right, I straight up died. Okay, so that's that's not good. Okay, this is my second favorite weapon. Still a big fan of it. Don't let, don't let my crap, my enjoyment of the Needle Cracker take away from this one because I quite like this one. And this part is actually really tough. These like moving uh, walls and stuff. Oh God. Okay, I almost died there. Oh my god. Alright, we have no extra lives, and... Oh, we do have the Needle Cracker still. Use that. Yes, everything die. I like how they give you a weapon that just clears the screen, because they're like, you're never gonna pass the game anyway. The, the, main, the main threat is the terrain. And the crazy obstacles you have to avoid. Look at this guy. So that, that guy was part of the Annihilation Armada. He was, he's a robot that has three long arms that spins in circles. I understand these like, uh, you know, these spider drones that like shoot missiles and stuff, but just a, a, a robot that just has three arms that spins like a propeller. How did that guy make it? <laughs> How was that design approved? Whoever is supplying arms to the Annihilation Armada, I don't know if they know what war is. I think they, they were like, well, like, they contracted me to build robots. I guess I'll build robots. And it's like, 
Th that's- those are not the kind of robots we're looking for. We're looking for more of the murder your family slash kill all the soldiers on the battlefield robot. Not like a robot that spins cool, you know? I don't know. I'm calling out the I'm calling out the arms dealer that invented the arm spinning robot. I don't think he knows what's going on. Okay, so there's bullets coming from the city. I didn't notice that before. I'm pretty sure one of those hit me. Fuck. It's so hard to dodge all that. Oh my god. Dodging the terrain is actually quite tough in this game. Oh god, avoid that. All that. Shouldn't have my favorite gun equipped. Or my second favorite. Go to thirdsies. Anyone want to bomb? I'm just bombing this city. Is this our city? I don't even know where we are. So, are we liberating Illus? Or are we invading the Annihilation Armada's home planet? Having some context would be good. Like, am I supposed to bomb civilian structures or leave them be? Oh my god. Okay, we'll leave, we're leaving that guy be because he came way too aggressively at us. All right, do your thing, lasers. Protect me. I do have one life. I do have one extra life, so it's pretty good. I think if I can get to the boss, this is this level's totally doable. I feel like the bosses have been the least hard part of this game. Not even that the bosses haven't been hard and challenging in their own way. Crap. But, oh my god, okay, well, speak of challenging and hard, this boss is kind of tricky. Um, but yeah, not that bosses haven't had their own challenges, but, uh, like, just compared to the level, they're not too bad. Okay, oh my god, and I'm dead. <laughs> that guy's hard, he takes up the whole screen, what are you supposed to do there? My guess was you're supposed to kind of go around him, but he totally crushed that idea. All right, we're not giving up those lasers. I think, let's go back to macro missiles because they might actually be more handy here. The bombs might be better on 2D levels, like the side scrollers where the bottom of the screen typically has stuff that you can just carpet bomb. Um, I'm just gonna be firing missiles here. The missiles are gonna be my first, my first go-to hit. It's very interesting that your three hits are aligned to your three weapons because it kind of makes you not want to go around using your best weapon because what if you take a hit like I did right there, right? So now I still have my, my good weapons. It's kind of an interesting strategy. You, you play from crappiest weapon to best weapon. Or if you do want to play around with your best weapon because you think you can do the best with it, you're kind of opening yourself up to potentially losing that weapon. Yeah, very, very interesting mechanics here. God. Oh, there we go. We're getting better at this part. Ow! What hit me? What hit me? All right, well, we made it through without dying. That's a victory, I would say. So my goal now is to just use this laser weapon to get to that mini boss. If I can survive to the mini boss with the laser weapon, hopefully only burn through one life killing that boss, but he was actually pretty, pretty difficult. What's the secondary fire here? Oh, it's just like two random missiles. Interesting. So every every gun, it's secondary fire, some kind of missile or bomb. It's just a much better missile if the gun is a missile. Crap. All right, well, we're going to make it to the boss, but I don't think we're going to have very many good weapons here. We basically are totally out of weapons. We're into pea shooters now. All right. <gasps> okay, we didn't even get around him. I think that's the key, though. I think, oh God, are you serious? I think, yeah, see, you're supposed to try and get around them. Okay. Oh God, okay, we took another hit, jeez. Kaboom, meet him under rockets. All right. Oh God, there's bullets. Yeah, eat that. Eat that. Eat that. Oh, God, I couldn't even move fast enough to avoid those things. Hey, I killed him. All right, well, suicide kamikaze also works, apparently. So now our, our only hope is that the, the boss shows up really soon. We don't die before we get to him. And we have, like, one life. So we have one chance to figure him out and then one shot to finish him off. That's basically it. Oh, my God. Nice to have a warning that something's going to come on the screen just to electrify everything around me. 
I guess pro tip, don't hang out in front of enemy ships, because they tend to shoot directly forward. What is happening here? Oh, is this like a, a city in space? Wow, this is such an elaborate city. There's city on the ground, and there's city floating in space. Where do you want to live? The city, or the city above the city? If the city is too much city for you, we built another city above the city. It's great. Oh my god, we're totally gonna die here, aren't we? We're totally gonna die here. Oh god, there's so much stuff on the screen. Oh no, we're going into a dead end. Dead end, oh, we, we found a way out. Oh, we found another way out. Oh, oh yes. All right. Okay, we made it to the boss. I'm feeling good. What level is this? Three? Okay, well, there's, as I say, I think there's only six levels. My hope was to see three. So if we beat this boss, we are ahead of the game. Okay. I don't know what this guy's all about, but he seems weak and feeble. Okay, but he's definitely not right. He's gonna come back with like a vengeance. He's like, you thought I was weak and feeble? You're the one who's weak and feeble. Oh my God, I can't even see the stuff. There's so much stuff on the screen. I, w did I lose all my weapons? He was firing so many bullets at once. I couldn't even see what was going on. Okay, his bullets explode. That's his thing. He, he's the guy with the explodey bullets. And we are in a lot of trouble here. Oh, God. Am I even damaging him? What part of him am I supposed to be shooting? Oh, God. All right, we have one more life. Let's make it count. I think we're damaging him slowly and semi-surely. Oh, God. Okay, we have to destroy his things that fire bullets. Oh, did we beat him? There's no way that's it, is it? Okay, no, there's... Now we have to face his final form. He keeps changing forms. Okay, what the heck? Oh God. Okay, those things shoot rockets and lasers. Crap. No, we died. Okay, this is it guys. Last continue. I don't feel great, but I don't feel horrible. You know what? I'm gonna try the good old straight laser again. Uh, we'll stick with that, and I'm gonna go with the missiles. We're giving up on the dream of the laser. The laser seemed great, but I wonder if the straight laser here does more more damage, you know? Like, the homing laser was kind of fun, but maybe this is the better weapon. I already regret my decision, because it feels weaker, So we're going into this final fight uh, in much worse shape than we have been before. But I guess we will see. We will see. Overall, I have to say, this is a very interesting Super Nintendo game. Uh, it's not one that I remember at all back in the day. I don't even remember, like, seeing it in video stores or magazines. Like, oh my god, that sucked! The laser can't even break through those things! Or it can? Okay, we're, we're going into this one life down, so we're already in a, a heck of a lot of trouble. Oh! Two lives down. All right, I should really start wrapping my thoughts up quickly. Uh, I don't remember this game back in the day. Um, I have to say, though, it's like a very, uh, like, solid shooter. Um, again, shooters are not necessarily my, my favorite genre. Uh, I have typically enjoyed them. Um, they're just sort of not, like, my favorite kind of game. So, you know, I'm, don't, don't take this as, like, the opinion of somebody who has a re very refined opinion of shooters and who's, who's tried them all. But I feel like this is a solid game. I feel like this is a solid game. I don't, I don't know why they wouldn't have released this. Wow, we're dead. That's the fastest death we ever had on that level. Game over. I don't know why they wouldn't have planned to release this in North America from the get-go, but I think definitely if you like old-school Konami games, if you like old-school shooter games, I definitely feel like this is a solid game to play. Um, and maybe it's a game that you kind of missed back in the day because maybe you didn't realize it was released in North America, or maybe you did play it back in the day. But uh, yeah, I think it's a solid entry. It's nothing, nothing like fully stands out to me as to why it has to be a game you must play before you die from the Thousand and One book. Uh, but, I mean, it does have the pseudo 3D effects from, uh, you know, sort of creating the uh, false horizon. So maybe that's what stood out to the, the authors of the book for this in particular one. Uh, but what do you guys think? Uh, Axel A, is it a game that you've played before? Do you think it's a great game? Do you think it's a game that you must play before you die? Or do you like the game and you think, yeah, it's, it's solid enough, but probably more for a niche audience? Uh, whatever the case may be, let me know in the comments down below. As always, I'm always interested to hear your guys' take on some of these classic games. 
because honestly, I can't be an expert in every game, and uh, I've never played this one before. And beyond that, whatever you think of my opinion here today, guys, hopefully you had fun. Hopefully uh, I got f suitably far enough. I don't know. Again, I failed utterly on my last continue there. Taking the straight laser was a total mistake. I should have kept that homing laser. That was a way better weapon. But uh, yeah, hopefully you guys had a laugh or two. If you did, don't forget to like the video and all that jazz. And uh, I will catch you guys in the next one. So until then, my friends, you all take care of yourselves, and we'll see you soon. Peace. Just sit back and let the lasers do their thing. Anyone want a bomb?